Now that we've defined real numbers, we can define sequences, which are infinite lists of real numbers. And to visualize them, just think of them as dots, where for every n, you associate a real number Sn. And like Steve Jobs always said, uh, connect the dots. Now, the most important thing about sequences is the notion of convergence, which just means that the sequence gets closer and closer to a certain number s. However, how do we make this formal? So how do we formalize this? Well, uh, for this, we have to use the epsilon definition of a limit. So definition, we say that Sn converges to s as n goes to infinity if, for all epsilon, there is capital N such that if N is bigger than capital N, then Sn minus S is less than epsilon. Now, in other words, what does that mean? It means that no matter how small the error epsilon, you can always find a threshold capital N think a million or something, such that after this threshold, Sn is at most epsilon away from S. And in other words, if you think of it in terms of planes, it means that no matter how small the runway, eventually you can always get in that runway. Again, even if it's tiny, tiny, tiny. And Using that definition, we can prove familiar limits such that, such as 1 over n squared goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, or 1 plus 1 over n goes to e as n goes to infinity. However, the important thing to notice is not every sequence converges. For instance, minus 1 to the n It's a pesky sequence which does not converge. And also sometimes the sequence can go to infinity and there's a, a, a similar definition here. And um, moreover, once we've seen that limit, we can also prove some limit laws, like if Sn goes to S and Tn goes to T, then Sn plus Tn goes to s plus t. Now this is all in nice, but the problem is it's still very hard to show that the sequence converges. And in fact, if you do more complicated examples, you'll see it's impossible. So it would be nice if we had some easy tests from co for convergence. And in fact, there are two of them that are pretty important. One is the notion of Cauchy. And Cauchy is nice because you can generalize this to arbitrary spaces. So Cauchy, again, voulez-vous Cauchy avec moi? All this means is, and it sounds very similar to convergence, but it's not quite the same. So for all epsilon, there is a threshold. So no matter how, how small the error, there is some threshold capital N, such that after this threshold, the values of the sequence are eventually close to each other. Then Sm minus Sn is less than epsilon. In other words, again, no matter how small the error, there is some threshold, capital N, such that after this threshold, all the values of the sequence are at most epsilon away. So let's say this is Sn, this is maybe Sn. They're all in this good region. And be careful. Strictly speaking, it's not the same thing as convergence, because convergence means the sequence gets closer to a fixed number. Here, the sequence gets closer to each other. That said, in the real numbers, this is the same as convergence. And yet another reason why the real numbers are great, they're what's called complete where Cauchy is equivalent to convergence. 
So that's one way you can show that the sequence converges, show it's Cauchy. However, there's an even better way, and that's what's called the monotone sequence theorem, which simply says that if Sn is increasing and downed above, then Sn converges. In other words, suppose you have a sequence that's increasing and that has a ceiling, then it turns out that sequence must converge. And similarly, if Sn is decreasing and has a ceiling from the below, then it must also converge. And again, super easy way of uh, showing convergence. And not only that, so remember the limit of a sequence doesn't always exist. But using this, we can actually define a generalization of a limit which always exists. And that's what's called the limb soup. And it's really a generalization of the soup, but for limits. And let me explain what's going on. So suppose you have a sequence like that. Like this, like this, like this then we would like to define the biggest possible limit, which in some sense should be somewhere around here. Well, how do you do this? You do it with thresholds. So intuitively, the limb soup is the supremum, but after a long time. So consider capital N, so fix capital N, and consider the biggest value of Sn after that threshold. Well, here it should be somewhere here. But what if you increase that threshold? So let's say capital N is now bigger. Then that supremum is actually smaller. Because you see, after this, you have fewer values to consider than after this. So it's like an excellent student who dropped the class, then of course the average will be lower. And in particular, notice this sequence, which depends on capital N, is actually decreasing. And since it's decreasing and bounded below, it converges, and it's that limit that we'll call limb soup. So definition, again, the limb soup, as N goes to infinity of Sn, that is, again, the supremum of Sn, after that threshold, but where that threshold is very big. Uh, so as we let that threshold go to infinity. And similarly with limb inf, where uh, we take the infimum instead of the supremum. And the point is the limb soup always exists, which is great. Now, that said, in my opinion, it's still an abstract concept, and it would be nice if we can somehow attain it. Luckily, we can using the notion of a subsequence. So a subsequence, if you think of Sn as a train, then a subsequence is just an express train. So let's see. Kind of a subset of a sequence that's also a sequence. And the nice thing is there's always a subsequence. There is Snk a subsequence of Sn that converges to that limb soup. So in other words, there's always a way of attaining the limb soup using subsequences. And last but not least, why are subsequences so great? Because there's this beautiful theorem called the bolzano weierstrass theorem. And it simply says as follows. Suppose you have a sequence that's trapped so in other words, it's bounded, then, well, it cannot just go anywhere. Basically, what we have is that it has a convergent subsequence. So there must be some subsequence SNK that converges. Kind of like the string to a balloon. Kind of the SNK is a string that holds the balloon fixed so that it's bounded in some sense. So fact, Bolzano Weierstrass, if SN is bounded, then SNK 
as a convergent subsequence.